Good morning, friends. Welcome to this Mass. This Mass we pray for all the people. And those who have special asked us to pray for them. All people who clap your hands, cry to God with a shout of joy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are saying to me the contract of art, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May your mighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. John. I rejoiced greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. But now, lady, I ask you, not as though I were writing a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning. Let us love one another, for this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, as you heard from the beginning, in which you should walk. Many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh, such as the deceitful one and the Antichrist. Look to yourselves that you do not lose what we worked for, but may receive a full recompense. Anyone who is so progressive as not to remain in the teaching of the Christ does not have God. Whoever remains in the teaching has the Father and the Son. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who walk, follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. With all my heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commands. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Within my heart I treasure your promise that I may not sin against you. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Be good to your servant that I may live and keep your words. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Open my eyes that I may consider the wonders of your law. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Similarly, as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, building. 
On the day when the Lord, when Lord left Sodom, fire and brimstone rained from the sky to destroy them all. So it will be on the day of the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, someone who is on the house stop, house stop and who, whose belongings are in the house must not go down to get them. And likewise, one in the field must not return to what was left behind. Remember the wife of Lot. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses it will save it. I tell you, on that night there will be two people in one bed, one will be taken, the other left. And there will be two women grinding meal together, one will be taken, the other left. They said to him in reply, Where are Lord? He said to them, where the body is, there also the vultures will gather. The Gospel of the Lord. Our first reading comes from the second letter of John. The writer of this letter is also the writer of the fourth Gospel. And in both uh, writings, he addresses to a known community, especially what we have read today. He writes to a known community. And this unknown community is addressed as the elect lady. This should remind us of the use of the word woman in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. It first meant a community of God, a community of people who believe in God. That term is used over and over to refer to a community. Of course, over the, over the, down the tradition of the church, we have, we have appropriated that term, woman, in its best outcome to, um, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, an individual from that same community who has exemplified what the Lord of the community expects. So that term community, that term woman, means the community of the people. It also means today Our Lady, Blessed Virgin. And in our reading, first reading today, its point is also means the elect lady, which is a community of believers. And what is the letter telling us, if we are members of that elect lady, that community? It is encouraging us to preserve in love both the first recipient community and our own community. The first recipient elect lady and the present elect lady, the Christian community. In all the senses, the term Christian community means. We are called to have, or it is encouraging us to persevere in love. But it is, the letter is also warning us, especially the first, the reading today, is warning us against error, anything that can stand in between us and knowing God, anything that can confuse, can confuse our faith, our knowledge about our faith and about God. For when we do not have the correct knowledge or a clear knowledge, our faith is also affected, and so is our relationship with God and one another. Because of this elect lady in which love is experienced <clears throat> and there is warning of taking care against the error, that reading also brings into question the understanding of incarnation or the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. That the incarnation, the birth of our Lord is not just only truth or a doctrine. But it is something, it is, is a reality that implies a conduct, the presence, the indwelling, the birth of our Lord in our, into our own con, uh, circumstances includes a challenge into be, having a different conduct of life. In other words, it is asking us to let Jesus to abide in our human circumstances, our human community, that is incarnation allowing and letting Jesus abide in our own individual hearts, in the heart of the community, in our human society. 
Therefore, we can be one in love with one another. We can love one another. And that is the kingdom of God. As the gospel spells it out, he himself represents that kingdom, and we in faith allow that kingdom to grow. We pray and act as so, as members of the kingdom of God, as members of the elect lady, as members of the community of faith. Let us rise as members of this elect lady, this elect community of faith, that we may bring our people to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have asked us to pray for them. For Sophia Muchiri, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are having their wedding tomorrow, wherever they are and in different parts of the world that they may exemplify the holy family of God. We pray to the Lord. What else we pray for? For our country and its legislatures, that they may find some accord with the good of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of these religions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this and all that is in our minds, in our hearts, in our community of faith, in our country, we bring them all to Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior forever and ever. Amen. Amen.